The Telluride has been a huge success for Kia, but rather than resting on their laurels, they've decided to give the model a pretty thorough refresh for 2023. Because the Telluride has been such a success, it's obvious that Kia didn't want to deviate too far from the formula that has made this one of the better-selling three-row crossovers in America. The Telluride has clawed its way up from about ninth in the segment to around fifth in the segment for 2022, and that success is likely going to continue with this refresh. I think they've done a good job making the exterior look a little bit different than the Telluride pre-refresh, but also definitely still a Telluride. It definitely is not as controversial as the look that we find in the new Sportage or the new Sorento. In addition to the new front end design and the new rear end design, we're going to get two new trim levels, X-Line, which is the looks off-roady version, and X-Pro, which is the more off-road capable version with more ground clearance, more towing capacity, all-terrain tires, and raised roof rails. And although Kia didn't provide pictures of this, there are also going to be three new colors for the Telluride. That's something that has been oddly limited with the Telluride up till now. On the inside of the Telluride, we find a new dashboard that is definitely very striking. It pulls a design cue from the EV6 with the large optional 12.3 inch displays. There's a 12.3 inch display for the instrument cluster and a big 12.3 inch display for the infotainment system in the middle. But below the infotainment system, it does not borrow the somewhat controversial button bank that we find in the EV6 or the new Kia Nero. Instead, we find essentially the same button bank that we had last year in the Telluride, which is certainly my preference. The steering wheel is apparently mildly refreshed as well, but honestly, it looks very similar to me. Depending on the trim level you're looking at, there are also going to be some additional interior color changes, some different upholstery choices here and there, but a lot of the style is still the same that we had in the pre-refresh Telluride. So we still have those sort of grab handle-like uh, designs on the center console. It's where we also find the toggles for the seat heating and seat ventilation up front. Under the hood, we find the same 3.8 liter V6 engine that we had before, producing 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. But if you get the Telluride X Pro, that is going to be the more off-road version of the Telluride, then towing capacity goes up from 5,000 pounds to 5,500 pounds. That's likely mainly due to the redesigned suspension because it has a little bit more ground clearance and probably a little bit higher payload capacity as well. On the electronic gadget front, the Telluride now gets Kia's latest digital key software, which allows you to use Apple Watches, Apple iPhones, and Samsung Galaxy smartphones as a virtual key for the vehicle. So you don't have to take the fob with you if you don't want to. You can just have your smartphone, and you can grant other people with those compatible smart devices access to the car for periods of time if you want. Unfortunately, Kia did not provide any pictures of the base model, but it does appear that the 12.3 inch infotainment screen in the middle is actually going to be standard, and the only part that's optional is going to be the 12.3 inch instrument cluster, although again, details are a little bit sketchy there. We are going to get a high level of standard feature content across the board, however. The highway driving assistant, a great aggressive lane centering feature, that's going to be standard, as is adaptive cruise control, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, blind spot monitoring. And in addition to that, we're going to get the latest version of Kia's highway driving assist software. Interestingly, one is going to be standard, the other one is going to be optional. The highway driving assist 2.0 system features slightly more aggressive lane centering, which was already pretty aggressive, and it features automated lane change functionality, although it is still a hands-on-the-wheel steering system. Expect to see the refreshed Telluride on dealer lots of a little bit later this year and of course stay tuned because hopefully I will be able to get my hands on one very soon to run it through all my usual battery of comparisons and tests. The Telluride is not just a really good looking three row crossover, it's also one of the roomiest three row crossovers available in the United States right now. If you're looking at a Highlander, a Pilot, a anything really in the three-row crossover segment and you want a more usable third row and a lot of legroom on the inside, the Telluride is probably a really great bet. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Be sure and find us over at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those other social places. I'll see all of you next week.